Hey, it's NBA Draft Eve. Let's talk about the Spurs the day before the big day. You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey, welcome back to Locked On Spurs and Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs beat writer for Kansas 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you back. Thanks for making Locked On Spurs your first listen every single day. Subscribe at YouTube, pick us up on iTunes, Spotify, you know where to find us. Do that right now. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more as the sports season continues. The sports uh, continue as well on over at FanDuel. FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a bonus or a boost daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer. You want to visit FanDuel.com slash Lockdown to get started. What are we talking about today? Well, you can see in your screen right now. Uh, we're going to be discussing the Spurs on draft day eve. Some final comments and rumors, the latest and greatest regarding your silver and black in the draft. Get into Locked On Spurs fan comments as well. But first, uh, I'm going to show you a video that me and Casey Vieira did for Ken's 5 TV, where we also talk about the draft. Uh, he asked me who I'm picking with number four and eight. And then we kind of just, you know, have a quick uh, chat about uh, tomorrow night's big day. So that is coming up next. And I uh, just want to share that with you before we bring in our guest, James Pledger. Yes, Pledger will be joining me in just a few minutes and discussing the Spurs on draft day E. So without further ado, check out this chat that me and Casey did over at Ken's 5 TV. Remember where you were? Yes. When that went down? Where yeah. were you? I was in Michigan. Okay. Michigan. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jeff Garcia might Hello, recognize everybody. his work on Kens5.com. Got us all taken care of on the Spurs front. So, of course, that's what we're going to talk about. I'm going to talk about the NBA draft just a couple days yes, away. Sir. Wednesday, Brooklyn, New York. And nobody knows what's going on. No. Not a soul. No. And, and that's part, kind of the, the fun thing about it because everyone says it's a, a mediocre draft. Yeah. But the unpredictability is actually pretty good. So, that said, let's start front and center. Number one, whether the Spurs will have it trade up or it will be Atlanta. Right now, who's going number one? I'm going to go with Klingon. Okay. I think Klingon will go number one. Okay. Yeah, I think he fits Atlanta better. And uh, personally, I like that a little bit of shakeup. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I think the Spurs are sitting at a good position. No matter what happens with picks one through three, if they don't trade up, right. um, I think the Spurs will get a quality contributor, whether it be a guard or a big or a swing guy, I think the Spurs will be fine. So I always ask this, Casey, what, in this draft, when does the draft begin? Like, I know everybody says number one, but seriously, when does it begin? <laughs> when does it really, really begin? It's like, <laughs> now, now it begins? Now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now. yeah. But uh, no, but uh, I think, I think, um, I think Clean will go number one. But I'm really interested to see what Houston does, because that could really see what yeah, the Spurs do. Yeah, very much so, very much so. And kind of piggybacking off that point, you yeah. hit on it a little bit of sports. Spurs, of course, have picks number four. Picks number eight going mm -hmm. in this thing, and a lot of chatter of whether or not they will move up to that number one spot, but we'll operate under this assumption, under this assumption mm -hmm. for the sake of the conversation. Spurs stay at four. Spurs stay at eight. In your mind, who comes to San Antonio? I got Castle. I okay. think he addresses exactly what the Spurs need, a point guard that can, that a big point guard. You know, just look at the Spurs' history from a trying a big point guard last year, so Hen didn't work out. Then going with Malachi, didn't work out. And then look at their draft history, Josh Primo, big guard, didn't work out. I think the Spurs will go with the castle. And at eight? Whew, that's a good one. That's when it, that's when it, about yeah, when it starts. That's when it, it really starts. That's when it starts with the Spurs. Yeah, yeah if I'm the Spurs, I, I, th I think I would trade it. Okay. I would trade it. You know, okay. who, who's open for business? You know, let's, let's, let's see what we can do here. Bring in a quality uh, veteran. You know, mm -hmm. I think that will work. But at eight, yeah, yeah. I, on, on my big board, if Dalton Connect is there, I want Dalton Connect. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's noted. The man said it. Yeah, make Written it happen, Spurs. <laughs> yeah. Written down right there and then. All right, so NBA draft, Brooklyn, New York, Wednesday. Ken's five will be in attendance. Our Nate Ryan and what will be a very fluid, fun evening. And listen, obviously last year number one was yeah. a lot of fun, but we knew he was coming here from the second that ping pong ball dropped. Absolutely. Not the case. So if you're looking for good TV, Wednesday night is the place to be. Jeff Garcia, Locked on Spurs. Check yes, out sir. the podcast. Always keeping us... Held down online. Yes. Thanks I'll for hanging out for with you. us. Anytime. Hey, but first I want to talk about FanDuel. I love sports. I love them so much that I never want them to stop. But as the sports season continues, uh, those games continue as well. And the sports aren't sportsing like I want them to. I want to go to FanDuel. Uh, but let me, uh, you know, let me get this real straight here. You want to go to FanDuel right now. 
this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer. What to do is just open the app and dream up some bets. And voila, you could be raking in a lot of cash, whether it's parlays, uh, you know, stat projection. I mean, seriously, pick something that you want to with. You want to use that at FanDuel. They got it all there. They're easy to use, very intuitive. Quick to sign up all over on FanDuel.com and uh, download the app as well. Quick, quick, quick. Get your uh, Place your bets in. Get them in fast. One, two, three, you're in. Hopefully, you'll be winning some big money. You want to head over to FanDuel.com slash lockdown right now to start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Hey, I also want to talk to you about Muslingers drive through Coffee. San Antonio, go there right now. 24-0-4,000 Oaks Drive open every single day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. You need a latte. You need a cold brew. You need uh, caffeinated drinks. You need non-caffeinated drink. You need their signature drink called the Muslinger. They got it all. Great menu, great staff, proud local sponsor of Lockdown Spurs, and a proud community member serving San Antonio the best coffee in the city and drinks as well. By the way, they even got mini donuts. Also, just a quick heads up, they have the Lightning Bolt series. Uh, that includes the Alien, which is in honor of Victor Wimbayama. So basically what they do, they supercharge your day, get you powered throughout the day, or get you going to start your day. But just a heads up, they're going to be, be made now with Lotus Energy. That's going to be the default. at seven power plant extracts in Lotus Energy. Now, if you want Red Bull, they'll still have that available for you. You just tell them. But just a heads up, it'll be Lotus Energy. Again, those seven power plant extracts. It allows them and you some flexibility to create new drinks, but you still got to try one. I love those uh, those Lightning Bolt Series drinks. They get me charged up like that. Go to Muslingers Drive Through Coffee right now, 2404. Go there right now because life is too short for a bland coffee. The Jedi uses the Force to subscribe to Lock on Spurs. Pass on what you have learned. And we're now joined by James Pledger with San Antonio Sports Star. Make sure to follow him on X at I am Pledger. And and a special guest too. We we have uh, Miss Mrs. Pleasure, right? Miss uh, Mom Pleasure, right? Yeah, yeah. Sitting yeah, next to Mama her. Pleasure. Mama the... Pleasure. Hi, Mama Pleasure. How you doing? I'm doing fine. All I'm right. I feel better. <laughs> oh, good, good stuff. All right. So, what are we talking about today? Well, it's draft day eve. Yes, the day before the draft. What are the latest rumors? What are the latest uh, rumblings? We're gonna get into that. And then some of your comments, locked on Spurs fan comments about the draft. But as y'all can see, that James is in his car right now. He is busy with mom. It's mother and Sunday, so we're not take up too much time and let him <laughs> go back on his day here. So, James, first of all, happy happy NBA draft day eve. And I gotta tell you, the rumors are flying. The latest one is from Draft Express. Supposedly, the Spurs have interviewed and have expressed interest in a big man. Yes, not a guard that they need, not a not not a swing man, but Donovan Klingon out of UConn. Now, the report mm -hmm. from Draft Express did continue to say, like, no, that this is not an attempt to pair Wemby with Klingon. It's more of an attempt to let other teams know if you want number four and Klingon is there, let's talk turkey. Let's talk some business. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> I mean, that's what it should be. Um, yeah. Unless you think Klingon's the best player in this draft, then take Klingon. Like, it, I've told you a million times, in the NBA draft, you, you take the guy. Whoever you think that guy is, go get that guy. Don't get cute because there are so few of them in the NBA draft. Yeah. And we're talking about a weak draft in general. Mm -hmm. If there's one of those guys, you don't get too cute with it. Um, I I think it's smart business for them to yeah. like, hey, yeah, Klingon's great. He does well. Maybe we like him. Maybe we don't. Uh, if you like him, make a pitch to get up here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, pleasure. That would imply, obviously, them trading away the number four pick. What would you think would be ideal for some sort of package if the Spurs do want to trade number four? Would it be to trade down? Would it trade out? How would you like the Spurs to handle that number four pick? I mean, it would be trading down, but also you'd be acquiring future assets because okay. you're moving up into a premium draft position into the top four. Um, I know it's not the strongest of drafts, but the, the value of the pick is what the value of the pick is, depending on 
what the team has valued of the player they're going up to get. So, I mean, it would more than likely, unless somebody's moving up from five to four, (laughs) you would be getting a future first for that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, look, don't get me wrong, uh, a seven foot four and a seven foot two. I mean, (laughs) that'd be just incredible if the Spurs were to do that. But, you know, some mock drafts do have Klingon being around that four area, you know, when the Spurs are on deck. Uh, So, yeah, you're right. Don't be cute about it. If Klingon is the best available guy, you get him and then let the chips fall where they may. uh, What what have we heard over and over again? Risha Shea and Sar and uh, Shepard. Those are the yeah. top three picks, right? So, I mean, if that's the case, that does mean that Klingon is there. Yeah. Now, the problem is, is if you think, if you have any whatsoever thought that Stefan Castle is that dude, yeah, don't mess around. Uh, Get him. Unless you're moving back that one spot, like I said, so someone can get clinging, like, you take Castle. Don't mess around with it. Don't get cute with it. Don't overthink it. If you have any inclination, and this is where, you know, you uh, GMs can kind of outthink themselves, mm-hmm. trying to get cute, too cute with the situation, acquire extra assets and still get your guy, and then you lose your guy getting cute with it. So yeah. whatever you do, make sure if you there's a guy that you love in this draft, make sure you don't miss your guy. Yeah. You know, this is not the only uh, rumor to pop up uh, ahead of draft day, which is tomorrow. Mark Stein, again, pleasure. If this is a case where there could be smoke, there's fire. Mark Stein reported recently that, yes, yep. the whole Spurs trying to get to number one spot, packaging four and eight. It's still out there. It has not cooled off. That keeps on popping up. Would you be surprised if the Spurs do make a deal for the number one spot? And no, a lot of it depends on the cost to go up to one. I do not Mm -hmm. want to go up to from four to one if it means giving Atlanta any of their unprotected picks back. Don't care to do it, right? Those are going to be too valuable with what we know that Atlanta is possibly about to become, right? With them trading away possibly both Murray and mm-hmm. Young. Trey Young, yeah. So there's no it, there's no need to give away any of those picks if that is the case. Mm-hmm. I, I look at the situation because those where those picks are going to be extremely valuable. Right, right. In this situation, though, for me, when I see them trying to make it, a, well, if the reports are true, they're trying to get to number one. Who's their guy? And I, I think they know. We all know it'd probably be Zachary Richie. We get that, but pleasure. He, Zachary Richie, is not mm-hmm. a point guard. The Spurs need. He's not a big that nope. can extend the floor like the Spurs need. Well, why him? He knows that they're targeting him. He knows they're scouting him. It's not a secret. You know, this is a guy that doesn't fit any role, any needs that the Spurs need right now. And the crazy thing about Zachary Richache is, like, the incredible jump he's made yeah. up the draft board because it's a guy that averaged, what, nine points in the impressive playoff run, and he's kind of skyrocketed up draft boards because yeah. of that nice playoff run he had so part of me is like oh you know sample size like i understand you know the potential ceiling factor there Mm -hmm. but that doesn't sound like a guy that's going to come in and give you any kind of immediate help the only thing it potentially does potentially does it satiates wimby that's one of wimby's guys right yeah it is yeah yeah, it is definitely one of Wimby's guys. I talked to Zachary recently, and he told me that, you know, they're boys. that They know each other. You know, they came up together out in France. So there's that. But the thing about it, too, is you look at with the Spurs and, and you know, all eyes are looking at if – well, I mean, let's put it this way. I'll give you an example. The this These mock drafts are all over the place that in our locked-on NBA mock, mm-hmm. Risha Shea fell to four. 
and I grabbed him. You know, so and then Klingon went yeah. number one. So, and, you, and that's that's just one sample. You look at any so other. Why, why? My other thing, like, I I I know you've seen the the mocks as well as I have, right? Mm -hmm. The Spurs are willing to move up to one to get Richeshay, but if the Hawks stand pat at one, they'll take Richeshay. That mm -hmm. makes no sense to me. How so? Like, does that does that add up in your book? So the Spurs moving up to well, get Richeshay. Well, I, I mean, of the, of the draft. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, th th that's the part of moving up to one that doesn't make sense. Is I've heard through you know the underground sources and everything that the Spurs are moving up and their target would be Zach J, right? Yep. I'm correct in that. Correct. But yes, I've also correct. heard that the Hawks, if they stay at one, would take Richeche. That doesn't so, make sense to me. Well, that just tells you just how freaking all over the map these reports and mock drafts are. I mean, nothing makes sense. You know, I was thinking about this recently, and I know I've asked you this before on your show, Extra Innings. You know, when does the NBA draft start? You know, they always say yep. there's your ones that go there. You know, one, two, we know who they're going to go. In my opinion, I had time to think about this. I think the draft maybe yeah. starts at three after Houston, because Houston could be their wild card in all this. If if Houston picks, oh yeah, Klingon, Klingon, then for the Spurs, that's Reed Shepard possibly on the board. Do you take Which Reed over Stefan? Yeah, which they could. Yeah, they definitely could, and Reed adds value to the Spurs. There's no doubt about it, because what have we said the Spurs need? They need to surround Wimby with shooters. Reed Shepard is a shooter. Like, he yeah. is one of the best shooters in this draft. Him and probably uh, Don Connect are the two best pure shooters in this draft. So, it, it tracks, but I still think the draft starts at one, because we don't have yeah. any clue what's happening there either. Like, exactly. Risha yeah. Shea could go one to Atlanta and change the fortunes everything. of the next three picks. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I mean, everything. And I mean, yeah, this, this is insane how, to me. Open. Just the sheer uncertainty that we have in this draft boggles my mind. No, it, it really is. It's all over the place. You got the Spurs trying to get to number one. Then your point about Risha Shea being there at one, regardless. Um, then yeah. you got. You, you know, uh, you know, so many of the rumors, it's a wild. And what well, that's what makes this draft kind of intriguing because, yeah, you know, you know, maybe this is the first time in a long time where the draft really starts at one. That's when it really starts, like all intents and purposes, one. There's no Wimby. There's no Zion. There's no LeBron. There's no Paolo Banquero. It's we don't know. We don't know. We don't. And. Uh, look, the only draft I can even equate to this would be the, what was it? Um, Anthony Black was when he went number one to Cleveland. Oh, Anthony was Bennett. Black? No, Anthony, Anthony Bennett. Bennett. That's, yeah. the, that's the closest thing I can think of in terms of a down draft. Or what, but even then, we all knew they were taking, taking Anthony Bennett at one by the yeah. time the draft rolled around. Like, that mm -hmm. wasn't a shock. At this point, there isn't a pick, I think, outside of, like, Reed Shepard going number one that would really yeah. shock me. I, I could see Sar going one. I could see Risha Shea going one. I could see Klingon going one. I could yeah. even understand Castle going one. Like, sure. all of those feel like that could happen. And I wouldn't be shocked by, by any of those prospects going yeah. number one overall and the fact that we haven't narrowed it down to at least one or two and it's still kind of wide open just yeah. boggles my mind it, it it tells me either a this draft really is that bad and nobody has any clue what they <laughs> yeah. want yeah. or b 
this is the best job GMs have ever done in terms of playing their cards close to their best. Yeah, absolutely. He is James Pledger with San Antonio Sports Star. Follow him on next at I am Pledger. James, before we switch gears and talk about the Lockdown Spurs fan comments, uh, what is your final uh, picks? If the Spurs keep their 4-8, and eight, who would you like to see the Spurs bring to San Antonio at 4-8? and eight? Uh, if they keep it, I would love to see, like, to kill two birds, one stone, or with two stones, I guess, um, because you see a lot of double ups with like Castle and Dillingham, yeah. one, four, and eight. I understand the thought process. If you miss on one, maybe you hit on the other. It's kind of yeah. two swings at the same tree. Um, but if you feel good about a guy like Castle, take Castle and then, you know, hopefully a connect or a Matas falls to you and mm -hmm. you can add either that defensive wing or stretch or at connect would be. Yeah. Yeah. You, you pretty much hit mine up. We did our, our um, Locked on NBA draft recently, and, and I told everybody, like, I, four was Risha Shea, and then at eight, I took Connect. I mean, if, if that's how the Spurs draft ends up, I won't be mad. Yeah. In real life, if that happens, I would not be mad at that. He is James Pleasure with San Antonio Sports Star. Follow him on X at I am Pleasure. Up next, we got your comments. We're going to keep it the draft tone here. What are y'all talking about on NBA Draft Eve right here on Locked On Spurs? This is Emily Swallow, and you are listening to Locked On Spurs with Jeff Garcia. And we're back right with James Pledger of San Antonio Sports Star. He is on X at I Am Pledger, host of Extra Innings over at the Star 94.1. He'll talk about that in just a few minutes. Now, during the break, Pleasure reminded me there were a couple other rumors that we need to talk about. And the first one is Garland. Now, it's not too, too new. We know there's been reports about the Spurs looking at Garland. But what's the latest? The, the latest was the fact that they have shown interest. They have called and placed calls. But the fact that Cleveland is unwilling to move him, at least at this time, apparently, is the yeah. latest that came out of that. So all those Darius Garland dreams that we've had floating around, <laughs> you know, which makes Castle even more important to me in the draft in terms of this isn't a – if you can't trade for a Garland or a point guard of that stature – this isn't a great free agency for a point guard either. So why yeah, not and, draft and your guy? That, you that too. And then also Garland, you know, the only thing that worries about me is not his fit, but how, what's the asset? That that worries because you know they're going to yeah. try to pull one and they're going to try to get one. You know, another rumor oh, you yeah. brought up uh, brought up was about your guy, Markkinen. Uh, what's the latest with him? The latest with Laurie Markkinen is the Jazz are making players like him and, and Colin Sexton and uh, Walker Kessler available as the dra draft day approaches Ooh, and there have been talks of fits with different team being one of those teams in terms of glory marketing and now the question much like darius garland would be what's the price to acquire set player mm -hmm. is utah looking to build on top of what they have with him or are they looking to shed salary and build from the draft up there you go see james is always on top of things look at that covering all the bases here making sure Y'all are well informed about what's going on, the latest and greatest with the Spurs. Look, NBA. I get it. I get it, Jeff. Look, we are uh, the Spurs are involved in far more rumors and rumblings than we we've are. ever been used to having. So, mm -hmm. kind of putting all of those ducks in a row, it's kind of hard when you've never had this many ducks to take care of. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I the Garland one slipped my mind. I thought we were talking. Well, on a lockdown Spurs, we talked about Garland. I'm like, oh, there's new stuff, but. Yeah, I guess that is new. Yeah, it looks like the Garland may not be available for a trade now. Yeah, you know, and that's, you know, before we get into fan comments, I was going to bring you this to your attention. So on the Lockdown okay. Spurs mock final NBA draft, at number eight, I took Dalton. What do you think? Yep, yep. I remember you took yep. uh, Risha Shea and Kinect. Risha Shea and, four. You know, yeah. I wasn't far off from you with my, you know, perfect draft scenario. Like Risha Shea is perfect, draft perfect scenario, in terms yeah. of, of – the fact that you're satiating when to me i'm satiating the team and Wemby is a part of yeah. it and stefan castle could with what he does and everybody talks about jonathan Klingon's defense when they moved castle to the point goal, defensive 
percentage with both of them on the court was 98th percentile. It was dropped into like the 83rd percentile. Mm -hmm. So Castle was a huge part. And the fact that, you know, for every person that tells me they don't want Trey Young because he's awful, okay. There have been a bunch of bad (laughs) defenders that have been masked by somebody else. Like Wemby is an eraser. But if you truly want defense, Castle and Matas, those are your guys. Those are guys that are locked down defense. Absolutely. All right, let's get into some Spurs fan comments. You all let me know over here at the Lockdown Spurs YouTube page. Pleasure. This first one's from Jeff McClanahan. He says, I wouldn't mind trading both first for a starter, no particular position, and a first pick next year. Spurs can only pay so many rookies. So he wants to trade for an established starter right now in the NBA, regardless of position, and he's focusing on next year's draft. I wouldn't mind that. I think next year's draft is a lot more enticing to make deals than maybe this year's your thought. Do you think that other people would be willing to part with next year's unprotected pick? Like no, everybody no, knows no. that next year's. Yeah. Everybody knows that that's the year. The thing is, the Spurs got Atlanta's pick because they did this four years ago. They saw beyond the curve of the earth. They knew. 25, mm-hmm. that's. And that is why they asked for 25 and future uh, uh, picks. Like, I think it's going to be hard, barring trading for stars, mm-hmm. like giving a star to somebody yeah. to get next year's draft picks from. Yeah, it, it, it's a good thing. But again, if some team is willing to do that, you know, I can see a team that's desperate that maybe want to do that, like a Phoenix or a Brooklyn. They have like no pick, like just to get going in their rebuild if that's where they want to go gets things started now you know but outside of that yeah it's going to be tough to tell other teams that are in the thick of things as far as the draft hey give us your first round picks for 2025 nothing going on in that year come on it's a week yeah yeah there's nothing i mean it's very weak we're not even yeah yeah, it's so weak but yeah (laughs) yeah yeah there's some guy named there's some guy named flag i think they got to confuse with Rick Flag uh, from the DC Universe, it's it's a it's a different yeah. flag. Yeah, exactly. All right, the next, <laughs> yeah, horrible pick. Yeah, the next comment it comes from Rolando Ariano. He says, "Oh, you're gonna like this one, James." And I put "like" in quotes. Um, bring Dejounte home and send the picks back to Atlanta and Charlotte. Uh, no, I'm gonna say that right now, Rolando. No, your thoughts? Look, I I like Dejounte. I don't like him that much. I, yeah. uh, 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 if I'm giving those picks back, unprotected picks, by the way, I'm no, no. going to need something. I'm going to need more than yeah. just a shot game for in return yeah. uh, for you to get exactly. the exact picks back for me to take on more salary with less years. Like, it does yeah. the math, the math, and the Spurs got over on Atlanta. Good for them. Don't give everything back for nothing. Like and DeJounte is obviously not nothing, but those picks are probably the most value valuable they can pop you right now, knowing yeah. A, how close Atlanta is to tearing everything to the ground in the mm-hmm. first place, and B, just looking at what they may be over the next few years. Like when Atlanta traded those picks to San Antonio, it was because they were supposed to be competing for an NBA chip. Those right. picks weren't going to be worth a thing by the time they can pay, right? Turns out they're going to be worth a lot more than what we thought they oh, were. Yeah. And that's a great oh, yeah. job by Bryant Wright. But at the same time, make sure you're getting your values worth when and if you give them back. I am. Yeah. I understand the fans need and want for star and for uh, just that period. You yeah. can do that during free agency. There's going to be some available. Uh, if you want stars, be careful how you go about building your team because as we've seen, whether it was the Brooklyn Nets or mm-hmm. the Milwaukee Bucks this year or the Phoenix Suns this year, throwing a bunch of draft picks at, at superstars and bringing a bunch of stars together and hoping they fit can be a fool's errand that can set your franchise back. Yeah, You've got to make sure it's the right guy that fits. I'm, I'm with you right there. Yeah, you don't want to do that. There's a lesson to be learned from the Phoenix Suns, especially the star pa- star pa- talent, but they mortgage their future. They have no draft. I don't know how many, and the Spurs can't afford Where'd to do that. Where'd all the picks that the Clippers give up about to? Oh, my goodness. I mean, OKC is stacked right now the picks- for Paul George. Exactly. What did all the yeah. picks that the Lakers gave up amount? Nothing. A bubble title? Yeah, bubble they title. Got a bubble but- title. 
No, no, James, James, James. They got a play-in title. I mean, come on. I mean, come on. They got the play-in title. <laughs> You're right. I'm sorry. I forgot about the in-season tournament. But that's what they I'm saying. The like, there, are bunch, yeah. there are a bunch of teams like Milwaukee. Milwaukee yeah. was a disaster. They fired their coach halfway through the year after yeah. acquiring and they have no depth left. Like, trading for stars can set your franchise back. And I get that you're trying to satiate stars to make them happy like a Giannis and Sukumpo. You just got to yeah. make sure it's the right. Yeah. He is James Pledger with San Antonio Sports Star. Follow him on X at I am Pledger. Tell us about the star, the blitz, your show, Extra Innings. What's all cooking up? Well, as you know, we uh, get you started bright and early with A.J. Hoffman and Rob Thompson on uh, the morning huddle, 6 to 10. Uh, we'll transition into Greeny for a part of the day, Jim Rome, and then at 2 o'clock, the Blitz with Jason Minix and Joe Ryan Eagle and myself producing. So we'll take you all the way to 6 o'clock, and then, of course, extra innings with pleasure from 6 to 7. Get you going through into your night, and we've got all the latest on what's going on, whether it's with the Spurs draft or the latest on the Dallas Cowboys and Texans or anything going on in the world of sports. Absolutely. 94.1. Everybody tune in or just go to the YouTube page. That's how I watch it. I just go to the stars. It's easier there. You can see all the fans. That's the best way. But if you're driving like Pledger is, put it on 94.1. Also, shout out to Mom Pledger. Thank you for being part of the show, Mom Pledger. <laughs> we appreciate that as well. So for James Pledger, I am Jeff Garcia. Hey, by the way, everybody, happy NBA Draft Eve. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Locked on Spurs.